Hey everyone, I'm Kirk. I am the resident bartender of Timothy Cox and Company. And this is uh, this week's cocktail deliveries as a way of saying thank you for um, your support of them and for um, referring your friends uh, to them. So uh, without further ado, this week's cocktails are inspired by Mardi Gras. Um, so even though it's a couple days late on this one, I wanted to do two classic New Orleans cocktails um, for you. So we're gonna start with um, a shaken light drink. It'll come in a jar that looks exactly like this. Some um, separation is natural in it. Um, this is a hurricane. And this, if you've been to New Orleans, it's gonna be a little bit different than what you may have had there. Um, the New Orleans uh, hurricane today is often made with a whole bunch of artificial sweeteners, corn syrup, um, and kind of a neutral alcohol. Um, and it's just a sugar bomb. Um, so this is gonna adhere a lot more toward the classic recipe that was created in about 1939 um, by Pat O'Brien's, uh, which is a famous New Orleans bar. And it was created because a lot of um, cognac and scotch whiskey was hard to come by at the beginning of World War II. And so, um, but Caribbean rum was fairly uh, common because it was made and it could just be shipped up the Mississippi River. So um, Pat O'Brien had a glut of rum that he didn't know what to do with, uh, mixed it with passion fruit syrup, which was another um, Caribbean fruit that he could get fairly easily, and then some lemon juice, uh, served it in a traditional hurricane glass, um, and that's how uh, it became popular. So this cocktail is gonna call for, um, I'm using Denizen um, Three Year Blanco Rum, um, which is made in Trinidad. It's a really great rum. Um, it's a nice value rum right around that $20 a bottle um, price point. It's one of my go-tos at home. Um, some fresh passion fruit syrup that I made and some fresh uh, lime juice. So with this one, you definitely wanna shake it up. And the reason is because you're gonna pour it, whoops, it's a mess. You're gonna pour it um, over crushed ice and you want it to be frothed uh, and aerated. If you don't do that, it'll increase the perception of sweetness because it won't be um, properly integrated and it won't be properly diluted if you just pour it over ice. So I really strongly encourage you uh, to shake this one. So I'm gonna add uh, about four or five cubes to my tin. And then, like I said, you kind of want this to be um, crushed ice. So uh, this one, you really wanna shake it hard. Um, so I would encourage you don't shake both drinks at once. There are two drinks per jar. Um, so pour maybe half of it into a shaker. Um, half of it is gonna be about um, three and a half, four, four ounces or so um, into a shaker. So I will shake this hard and I apologize that I just got a puppy and he's gonna bark at this. Um, this one, uh, if you have crushed ice in your freezer, you can pour it over new ice, um, but in the bartender's terminology, we do what's called just pour it dirty, uh, which means don't reuse your ice, just pour it into um, a longer glass like that. I'm gonna top it up with a little bit more ice. And this is your first shaken drink, a hurricane. I hope you enjoy. The second drink uh, is gonna be in pretty stark contrast to that really light fruity drink. And we're gonna go with um, what some people call, hey Baker, uh, some people call a New Orleans old fashioned. It's probably closer in style to a New Orleans Manhattan, um, but it is one of the most classic stirred and boozy drinks that comes out of New Orleans. It's called a Vucare, um, which is French for old square. Uh, it was invented about 1942 um, at the famous Carousel Bar uh, in New Orleans, and it calls for um, cognac. Um, so this was, I'm using a Camus cognac, um, but if you have a different one, if you like Hennessy, or if you like um, Pierre Ferrand, that'll work as well. If you're making, if you like this drink and want to recreate it at home. Uh, Redemption Rye, sweet vermouth, I'm using Dolan. Um, some Peychaud's bitters. These are New Orleans kind of uh, famous bitters. Has a lot of, um, it's gentian root based, which is a bittering agent, um, but it has a lot of anise uh, flavor. Only adding a couple dashes if that um, flavor is not uh, to your preference. And then finally, the final French ingredient to go with everything um, that's French, except for the rye whiskey, 
is uh, Benedictine, which is a honeyed liqueur that is made from, it was um, invented a couple hundred years ago by monks, um, and it was an herbal liqueur. Uh, now I think it's uh, a mega conglomerate owns it, but um, there are two ways for you to make this one. If you want the fancy, kind of more involved way, stir it over ice. So I'm gonna add some cubes to my mixing glass. Your jar will come like this, it'll look like that. Again, with this one, there are two servings in there. So if you wanna measure it, uh, let's see, um, be 2.25, two, just two and a half ounces or so um, in your glass, I'm just gonna eyeball it. And then I'm gonna give it a stir. If you don't have one of these mixing glasses, no problem, you can stir it up. Uh, instead of a fancy bar spoon, you can use a chopstick. That works really well. Um, and then instead of this glass, you can use actually um, cocktail tins. Work really great um, to stir in. So would a deli container, pint glass, uh, kind of anything you have. Um, the reason you're stirring it instead of shaking it, when you shake it, you can actually, you still might be able to see some bubbles um, kind of around the surface of the drink. Again, you're introducing air while diluting it. When you're stirring it, you're intentionally avoiding the introduction of air because you don't want it to froth up. You want it to still have, you can actually see him being a lunatic. Um, you're avoiding the introduction of air, but you still want to dilute it. So I pour mine over a big cube. Uh, if you don't have one, just pour it over regular ice from your fridge, or you can pour it up, which means um, not on ice in a stemmed glass uh, if you prefer that. And then I said kind of from the beginning, this is the fancier way, you know, to stir it separately, pour it over some fresh ice. Um, there are many days where I don't go through that process and I'll just pour it over ice directly. That's perfectly fine. I would say just give it a quick stir in your glass um, so that it's properly diluted um, in there. Finally, um, you will have a lemon twist uh, in your um, kit tomorrow. This is the garnish for this drink. So the way you wanna do it is put peel side out, so not the white side, white side faces you yellow side faces the drink, and you're gonna squeeze it kind of horizontally, and there are a whole bunch of oils um, that are in the peel of the lemon, and that's gonna coat the surface of the drink since the oil will float on top of the alcohol. It creates a nice aroma um, since the first thing that we do when we taste uh, is smell. Um, so we'll squeeze that out. I'll rub it around the rim of the drink, drop it in, and this is your Vucare. Cheers, everyone. I hope 2021 is treating you a little bit better uh, than 2020. Again, thank you from Timothy Cox and Company um, for supporting them. I hope these cocktails treat you well. If you have any questions whatsoever, you can find me on Instagram at Kirk Makes Drinks. Um, and cheers. Thanks.